Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord for waking us up this morning. All right. Amen. Y'all agree? Y'all thank the Lord? Let me see you wave your hand. Come on. Tell the Lord thank you. He's awesome. Amen. Sing with us. If you're able to stand on your feet, join us in praise and worship. Don't let us do all the singing. You sing. You clap. You dance. You run, you shout, whatever it is you want to give to the Lord this morning. Amen.
rest on our feet, please. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we know how, saying thank you. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son Jesus to die for our sins, dear Lord. If we had a thousand tongues, we wouldn't be able to thank you enough, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to gather here today. Thank you for your traveling mercy as we traveled here. We ask right now, the Lord, you said with two or more gathering your name, you be in thy midst. We ask right now that you come into our midst, the Lord. We ask that you stop by the fort this morning. We ask that you come on through the pews and up into the pulpit and all through the choir. We ask that you bless our pastor, dear Lord, as he delivers the word. Also, dear Lord, we ask that you bless the tithes and offerings. We ask a special blessing for those who had the heart to give but not the means. It's in your son Jesus, matchless name we pray. Amen.
Baptist Church. Good morning, pastor, ministers, diaconate, congregation, and those on, on the line watching, streaming. I am Teresa Sims. I am the chairperson for the Prime Timers. Do we have any first-time visitors here today? If you do, if you are, will you please stand, please? Okay, everybody, family. Prime timers. <laughs> Prime timers meetings are every second Tuesday of the month, except for this month. This month, our meeting will be this coming Tuesday from 11 to 1 o'clock in the fellowship hall. Reverend Sanders is the minister for the prime timers. Are any of the team leaders present for the prime timers? If you are, would you stand, please? They can't see you. They can't see me. <laughs> um, the meeting on this coming Tuesday, we would like those that can make it. We would like to get your input as to what activities, what would you like to see us do? Any input you have at all? You have anything you want to say? Good morning, Four Foot. You know, I, I picked up my phone this morning, and the first thing I saw was a scripture from Romans 8, verse 31. It said, what do we think, what then should we think of these things? For if God's before us, for if God is before us, <laughs> we don't have anything to worry about. You know, in this, in this post-pandemic season, prime timers, including myself, going through some challenges in our lives. Um, it's not new, but you know, God promises to be with us. We're reminded again in Isaiah 43, verse 18. He says, forget these things of the past, for I will do a new thing. And so God is doing a new thing in the prime timers. He is lifting up new leaders in this new sin. So we're going to have a great year. I hope that uh, our prime timers are going to support us this year. Come on out to our meetings. We're going to address some concerns that you, that you told us about last year. Uh, we're going to start with our technology issues. We're going to make sure that you're able to communicate with the church in particular. We're going to start there and work our way forward. Amen? Amen. God bless you all. Fort Foot Baptist Church Prime Timers Ministry will be holding their monthly meeting every second Tuesday at 11 a.m. The meeting is to gain insight on the wants and needs of our senior members at the fort. So be sure to make your voice known and come out to the meeting. Today, during our 11 o'clock service, Fort Foot holds Children's Church and Youth Church. So head to the Fellowship Hall for Youth Church and Room 27 for Children's Church during the 11 o'clock service. Hope you enjoy. On Saturday, March 2nd at 11.30 a.m., join the Scholarship Committee for their Where's the Money virtual workshop. This will be a good time to learn about scholarship opportunities and career opportunities for college students and trade school students. Discover how our expert panel was able to retrieve over a million dollars in scholarship money and how to navigate post-college life. The link to the meeting can be found on the church website.
competition will be held during both services on Sunday, March 17th, 2024. This year's theme is Kingdom Women, Fixing Our Eyes on Jesus. When life is difficult, frustrating, and discouraging, don't give up. Look up and fix your eyes on Jesus. Our Women's Day Scripture is Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. The Women's Ministry would also like to open an invitation for you to join the Women's Day Choir. They will be holding rehearsals at 7 p.m. on Thursday, February 29th, Thursday, March 7th, and Thursday, March 14th. All sisters are encouraged to wear white or off-white for this event. For additional information, please contact Sister Rosalind Murphy. God bless. My name is Shelley Long and I'm the chair of the Nurse Health Ministry. The month of February, we talked about the eight essentials of health, heart attack, hands-only CPR, and today I'll be talking about stroke. Stroke is the number five cause of death and the leading cause of disability in the United States. A stroke occurs when a blood vessel that carries oxygen to the brain is either blocked by a clot or ruptures. When that happens, part of the brain cannot get the oxygen and blood it needs so it and the brain cells die. This video will teach you how to recognize the signs and symptoms of stroke. We can reduce the risk of stroke by knowing these signs and symptoms and calling 911 as soon as possible. For my friend, Luke. For my mom, Paulette. And for my mom, Finia. For my husband, Helmut. Honor someone you love by learning the warning signs of stroke. If you see face drooping, arm weakness, or speech difficulty, it's time to call 911. A stroke can happen to anyone at any age. Be ready to spot a stroke fast. Learn more from the American Stroke Association at stroke.org. We hope you enjoyed our Heart Healthy Month presentations and the handouts we provided everyone. We would love for you to give us feedback and ideas for future presentations. We also encourage any nurses or student nurses to join our ministry. Thank you again and stay healthy. Foot and our Church Without Walls who are live streaming. I am here today to present to you, not present, to let you know we're doing our last Black History Moment, but not me, our youth are. They have studied their artists, they did the research, they did the background, so what you hear is what they prepared. So you don't want to hear me anymore, you want to hear who they chose and what fun fact or interesting tidbit they found out about their artists. Enjoy. Muddy Waters was born April 4th, 1913. During his musical career, he electrified the blues genre with his amazing guitar and singing skills. Some of his top songs are, I'm your hoochie coochie man, <laughs> and she loves me. He died April 30th, 1983, but left a pathway for future blues artists. This is B.B. King. King was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987 and is one of the most influential blues of all time, earning the nickname the King of Blues. B.B. King was born on September 16, 1925. His most favorite song is The Thrill Is Gone. King faced the typical difficulties faced by many children who stutter. However, he had role models who stuttered. His uncle, Major, was a severe stutterer, and King wrote of him because probably I stutter too. 
The way he suffered with his speech broke my heart and made me love him even more. On May 14, 2015, at the age of 89, he died from vascular dementia caused by a series of small strokes as a consequence of his type 2 diabetes. Even with his death, he died and lived the king of the blues. Thank you. I am David Walker. David Walker was born on September 28, 1796. He was an American abolitionist, writer, and anti-slavery activist. His father was a slave, but his mother was free, therefore he was also free. In 1829, with the help of the African Grand Lodge, he published the book An Appeal to the Colored Citizens of the World, a call for black unity and a fight against slavery. The appeal brought attention to the abuses and inequalities of slavery and the responsibilities of individual individuals to act accordingly accordingly to religious and political principles. He died on August 6, 1930 at the age of 33, but his impact on slavery and black unity will always be known. James Reese Europe, born February 22, 1881. James was an American ragtime and early jazz band leader. He was also an arranger and a composer. He was a leading figure on the African-American music scene of New York City in the 1910s. Ubi Blake called him the Martin Luther King of Music. He passed away at the age of 38 on May 9, 1919. I am Miles Davis, um, and I am... <laughs> I am revered as one of the most influential jazz trumpeteers of the 20th century. Um, I was born in Alton, Illinois, where I remember getting my first trumpet from my father's friend, John Eubanks, at age 13. And I will be playing Misty, arranged by Errol Garner and Johnny Burke. memorist, poet, and civil rights activist. I published seven autobiographies, three books of essays, several, several books of poetry, and am credited with a list of plays, movies, and television shows spanning over 50 years. I received dozens of awards and more than 50 honor degrees. After traumatic events, I became mute for several years and lost my voice, but through my resilient spirit, I found it. And up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Dana Elaine Owens was born in Newark, New Jersey, on March 18, 1970. She found her stage name, Latifa delicate, sensitive, and very kind, in a book of Arabic names when she was eight. Queen came from her mother, teaching her that all women are queens. 
She was raised in the Baptist faith. She attended Catholic school in Newark, New Jersey, and Essex Catholic Girls High School in Irvington, but graduated from Irvington High School. After high school, she attended classes at Borough of Manhattan Community College. Always tall, the 5 foot 10 inch Dana was a power forward on her high school basketball team. She performed the number home from the musical The Wiz in a grammar school play. Queen Latifah is an American rapper, actress, and singer. She has received various honors, including a Grammy Award, a Primetime Emmy Award, a Golden Globe Award, three Screen Actor Guild Awards, and two NAACP Image Awards, in addition to a nomination for an Academy Award. In 2006, she became the first hip-hop artist to receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I am Queen Latifah. We are Tia and Tamara Maori twins who were separated at birth with, with each being abducted by a different parent. <laughs> One day we had the chance to encounter our shopping at the clothing store at the mall. After our families meet, my adopted father was hesitant to allow Tia and her mom to stay with us at our home. But just because we're twins doesn't mean we're identical in every way. I'm the intelligent one who's from inner city Detroit. <laughs> And I'm the boy crazy one who's from the suburbs. Together we are sister to sister from a show that ran from 1994 through 1999. Taraji P. Henson was born September 11, 1970 in Washington, D.C. She graduated from Howard University with a degree in theater arts and debuted in her first film, Streetwise, in 1998. However, she is most known for her role as Cookie in Empire. Taraji often speaks about her struggles as a black actress in her work, field of work, but throughout all her mental and financial struggles, she continues to persevere and be an example for young and old black people everywhere. I am Langston Hughes. I am a poet, social activist. While being a part of the Harlem Renaissance, I have over 800 poems, 868 to be exact. While one of the 868 of my poems, I look at the world as one of my famous ones, which I have today. I look at the world from awakening eyes and a black face, and this is what I see. This fenced off narrow space assigned to me. I looked in at the silly walls through dark eyes and a dark face, and this is what I know, that all these walls oppression builds will have to go. I look at my own body with eyes no longer blind, and I see that my own hands can make the world that's in my mind. Then let us hurry, comrades, the road to find. Thank you. Let's give it up, family, for our lovely youth of Fulford Baptist Church. The thrill is gone, but our youth remain live and vibrant, full of vigor and vitality. Thank you, Anointed Youth. You. you represent so well. Good morning. Since everybody's introducing themselves, I guess I'll say I'm Pauline Hamlet. And I'm here to present some awards this morning. Um, and for those young folk who just finished up, if you know me, you know that's my passion. And I'm so happy to be here this morning to do this because on one side, there's law enforcement, and on the other side, there's education, and that's me. On the law enforcement, husband, officer, helicopter pilot, daughter, lieutenant, son-in-law, motorman, son, officer, 
and mama over here being an elementary school principal. So that's where I am. But before I go into the awards, just by listening, I thought I needed to share something with the young folk today to let them know how many mentors they have and first timers here at the fort. And I just want to call out a couple of names and then I'm going to get on with the awards. Uh, first is one of our recipients today got a whole lot of first time and that's I don't know whether to put her Reverend Chief Pamela Smith or Chief Reverend Pamela Smith, but I'll talk about her later because she can get something else. But we have um, Deaconess Penny Brown, who's a first time of ballet. I learned that last week. She did. And, and then we had. Uh, Deacon Tamar McGuire, who was a colonel down from Russellville, Alabama, the only black one they had down in the neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, he's no longer with us, but we had Deacon McElvain, who was a pilot who drove those big old, big, 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 big planes. And there's Michael Bell. I don't know if he's here today, but he drove that, uh, was flying that Black Hawk helicopter and all of those things. And, and uh, uh, she doesn't know I'm going to say it, but I think Reverend Bearden is our first uh, female uh, church administrator. <laughs> And last but not least, and I'm going to talk about him a little bit later, is our pastor, who is a first. But we're not going to say first where. We're going to get to that later. But right now, getting to the, uh, the recipients this year, our first one is an educator. But if the, all the educators in the audience, please stand, be you t educator, teacher, a whatever. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is teachers are born. They're not made. Because you got to have it in here in order to do that. And the person that I'm going to uh, give this first voice of change award has it in here. And her name is Celeste Carr Williams. Now, Celeste was born in Wilmington, North Carolina, and she attended these public high schools in Wilmington, North Carolina, and graduated from the um, Rose Williams Senior High School, and she received a Bachelor's of Science degree in biology from Elizabeth City State University in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And she completed advanced degrees at Towson, Howard University, and the University of Maryland. Now, Celeste is a committed educator. Uh, she takes pride in her 43 years of career as a teacher, a leader in Washington, D.C., Kent County, Maryland, and Prince George's County public school system. And she did a lot of things. A lot of things, but I'm going to say this one in order. During her distinguished career, Celeste served as two terms of the chair of Prince George's County Education Association, and that had 10,000 members. I wanted to call that to your attention. That's a lot of people to be in charge of. But since her retirement, um, she has received the Elizabeth City University Legacy Award, and she has been the chair of the Prince George's County Education Association Foundation Scholarship Fund, and she was also inducted into the Prince George's County Hall of Fame. So Celeste, if you would come forward, and if Dr. Melissa would come forward.
Fort Foot Baptist Church 2024 Voice of Change Award presented to Celeste Williams, Master Teacher. By word and deed, your presence has enriched the lives of students in Prince George's County and surrounding communities and serves as an example for all. Reverend Joseph W. Lyles, First Lady Sheila Lyles, Black History Committee, we love you. Thank you. Just one comment to my colleagues and friends. Remember that Dr. Martin Luther King made the quote that we would always know that freedom has always been an expensive thing. You have to pay. Don't forget to vote. Now this time I save this uh, for later because Celeste is married to Leroy Williams, who is a longtime deacon at this church. But I'm going to ask you to come forward here. And the reason for him coming forward is he received the award last year, but he's just getting his plaque. <laughs> He was waiting for me to expire. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to read Fort Foot Baptist Church 2023 Voice of Change Award in grateful appreciation to Deacon Leroy Williams. The Fort Foot Baptist Church family and the community at large is truly thankful for your faithful service to the people of God. You are an example of dedication whose impact has has and continues to endure. Reverend Dr. Joseph W. Lyles, pastor, Mrs. Sheila M. Lyles, first lady, and the Black History Committee. I, I just want to say to you that that plaque was just handed to me a few minutes ago and said, oh, it's been in the library since last year, but now you have it. Uh, before I go to the next one, uh, and it is, I call myself ex officio police officer because I had so many. So we're going to ask all law enforcement, security people, if here, please stand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now this next award is um, one that we're gonna, after I read her bio, I tried to figure out why it was necessary for me to she'd won everything else. So I didn't know whether I should just say, okay, just come on up here and get it. But uh, as I said earlier, I'm not sure if I should say, uh, Reverend Chief Pamela Brown, uh, Chief Reverend Pamela Brown, but the thing I do want to say about her is she's a member of the Fort Foot Baptist Church. When we talked about Chief Pamela Smith here, what we wanted to say was um, we wanted to show her some love. We wanted to show her that she had a gathering and somebody on their knees praying for her and making sure that she was going to be just what all of these papers had to say about her. And that is the fact that she was born in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. She has spent over 25 years in law enforcement, and she has a dedicated experience, career having achieved numerous commendations and awards 
while in the United States Park Police. She served as a major field officer across the United States in San Francisco, New York, Atlanta, and Washington, D.C. And in 2021, she became chief of the U.S. Park Police, and she's also been a canine handler, explosive ordinance, senior instructor at the Federal Law Enforcement Center in Glencoe, Georgia. I think I got that right. But after all of that, she became the first African-American female to serve in the agency's 230 years of history. So I think that deserves it. In April of 2023, Assistant Chief of Police Homeland Security, that was Chief Smith, July 17, 2023, Mayor Bowser announced that she would be the next chief of police by a unanimous vote on November 7, 2023. But from what I gather, she is an humble person and goes about her father's business. She's a member of a lot of organizations, the Black Law Enforcement, International Association of Police, and I do have to say this one, she's a member of the Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, and that's my sister. <laughs> and she is a woman in the federal law enforcement. So, Chief, would you please come forward? <laughs> Dr. Melissa. Fort Foot Baptist Church 2024, the well-deserved Voice of Change Award, presented to Chief Pamela Smith. Metropolitan Police Department, Washington, D.C. With our genuine gratitude for the extraordinary work you do every day to protect the citizens of the District of Columbia, Reverend Joseph W. Lyles, First Lady Sheila Lyles, and the Black History Committee. Photo. To God be the glory for all that he has done and all that he continues to do and all that we know that he will do in the spaces and places in which we need him to show up. So we give him praise on today. We give him honor on today and we give him, we give him glory. Somebody said once, um, when Mayor Bowser announced me as the acting chief of police for the Metropolitan Police Department, why would anybody want to take that job? <laughs> and I come to say to you on this morning that many are called. But few are chosen. And I just stopped by to let somebody know on this morning that when the Lord chooses When the Lord chooses you to be in a space or in a place, it doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter what women, boys, and girls says. But when you stand on the word of God, it doesn't matter what happens across the District of Columbia. I'll tell you right now that crime is down in the District of Columbia. Why? Because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare I not trust the sweetest frame, but holy. When you have a chief that knows the Lord, 
Can I get a witness? Hold on. But holy lean on Jesus' name. Listen, listen, listen. If it had not been for the Lord on not just my side, but your side, where would we be? So I thank Fort Foot Baptist Church for this honor and this recognition. But I tell you, it's not over until God says it's over. God bless you and God keep you. to you that we would have one more award and we do have one more and I don't know how many of you um, look at the Grammys where they list all these things but you never know who the person is or what movie won until the end so what I'm going to read to you this morning are a list of things I'm going to let you think about where it's going to and this award is going to someone who was born in the District of Columbia. He was educated in Waldorf, Maryland. He loves basketball. <laughs> he attended Glenville State University, Howard University for his master's degree and his PhD. He's an humble man, and he's a servant of God. And he received Jesus Christ in his life at the age of 16 at a camp in Damascus. He served as a deacon at Mount Sinai. And after that, he went on to get licensed to be a preacher. And we talked about somebody being a first. And I think we had a number of pastors here at Fort Foot, but he's a first. And he is the first African-American pastor of the Fort Foot Baptist Church. This did not get my approval. I don't want to take the heat from him. That's why I'm going to let Dr. Melissa read it. Another well-deserved honor. Fort Foot Baptist Church 2024 to a very special pastor. In honor of your faithful and dedicated service to the ministry, we hereby present this award to Reverend Dr. Jo Joseph W. Lyles. We are grateful for your willingness to give yourself and be used where God has placed you. You have taught us to have the faith to hold on and to stand on God's word. 
Thank you for your continued leadership and guidance from your membership. And one thing I would like, one other thing I would like to say, I had it on the paper, but I was trying to get finished, is all during the pandemic, I don't recall him ever missing a Sunday of being here. Not one Sunday. Let's give this servant of God another standing round of applause. God be praised. This is a total surprise. Had they informed me, I probably would have declined. But they didn't inform me, so here it is. So I thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Blessings have been pressed down, shaken together, and running over to God. Be the glory of great things he has done. Hallelujah. Now, one other thing. Don't go. There's one other person that I have to recognize because she's here with the chief. And she is... You know I'm talking to you because she's an educator, superintendent of the schools, D.C. public school system. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Would you like to have a word? No, because I think the chief has taken care of all of us for today. Thank you so much. I just have one um, quick recognition. I was asked to organize the Black History Program for this month, but I have some people who actually did the heavy lifting for me. So I want to recognize Maylena. Please come forward. I also want to recognize Ms. Hamlin, who is my advisor for the Black History Program. Come on up. Always my advisor. And then Penny Brown, who helped with the African dancers. I'm going to give her flowers to her husband. She's with her mother. You know how it is when you're a caregiver. So we're going to give her roses to you, Reverend Brown. So again, thank you for the, doing the heavy lifting. It takes a team. It's been a good, busy, blessed morning. Can we give God praise? We have one more surprise, one more surprise when we finally get to look at the preaching teaching time. Mr. Banks is a Hall of Famer in the Negro Baseball League gonna come and give us a short home run, grand slam, and then we'll be on our way. Foot Baptist Church. <clears throat> and all that has been done and said, it is absolutely what's necessary. It took the entire village to get us to where we are now. But in that time, that was a little fun taking place as well. And it was baseball. I think baseball played such an important part because it actually kept the communities together. It gave them something to cheer for. It gave them a place and a, and a, and a group to, to speak with to get the opportunity to go out and keep us lifted up. Baseball was very good to me. I got an opportunity to play at 16 years old. My father took me into Newark, New Jersey and introduced me to some of the American, uh, some of the uh, Negro League players of Newark Eagles in particular. I thought I could play. I thought it was all that. And uh, they said, okay, son, come on out here. It's, it's auditioning time. And I played shortstop second base, so I stood at the shortstop position. <clears throat> and it looked awful big. <laughs> the, the, the guy in the, in the batting cage hit the first ball to me a ground ball that I'm supposed to pick up and throw at the first ball. What I want you all to know that I knocked it down, I kicked it, <laughs> I bent over to pick it up and almost fall, <laughs> fell on my face. That was my introduction to baseball, Negro League baseball. 
but I consequently stayed for a very long time. I played my last baseball game in 19, 1985. Even while chief, I was, I was on the police department, but I wasn't doing all police department time. <laughs> but I, I, I just wanted to say that I didn't want it to be lost on anyone, the role that Negro League Baseball played in the rise of the Negro people. On two days ago, I got a, a package from New York, and I opened it up, and it was from the Commissioner of Baseball asking me to be a part of the celebration of Negro League Baseball during Negro League, uh, new, doing this time of celebration for the Negro people. I need, he wanted me to be in the oldest field. Now, some people are from Alabama. It's the oldest field, American baseball stadium, the oldest in America. And that's Rickwood Field in Birmingham, Alabama. I will be there to represent all of Negro League Baseball, all of, the, all of the people who had an opportunity to play. And I must say that during the time of, America, of Negro League Baseball, there were three women who actually played Negro League Baseball. One of, one of them was, is our own Mamie Peanuts Johnson from here in Washington, D.C., and Tony Stone. They, all, they both played for the Indianapolis Clowns. And if you all know of the movie Bingo Long and the All-Stars, that was a make of the, uh, uh, of the, all, of the uh, All-Star team. Uh, and so I am thankful to this church, to my pastor, of giving me the opportunity to stand before you and talk about one more piece of American history as it pertains to the Negroes, and that's the Negro League Baseball. Thank you.
we can say was his grace and mercy that has brought us to from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same he's brought us all from a mighty mighty long way to have a witness in the lord what a historic month historic day in in four foot baptist church I'm almost tempted to call up the Reverend Chief Pamela Smith to let her come back and finish her sermon. Almost tempted to do that if she has a word because apparently she wasn't finished. The floor is open to the Chief if she has a moment to finish. I know when it's time to yield. Oh my, I, I wasn't prepared, but somebody said you always need to have a sermon in your pocket. So I'm pulling up my sermon out of my pocket. So just give me a few moments and I'll ask you to turn with me to the book of Psalms. The 27th book of Psalms. Just give me a second. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus because he's worthy. Uh, he's worthy to be praised. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord just one more time. And what I'll say about Fort Foot Baptist Church, that it was Fort Foot that got me through the pandemic. And when the young lady said that uh, Pastor Lyles never missed a Sunday, that's what got me through the pandemic. I actually joined this church in the middle of a pandemic. Come on here. Y'all don't know that Jesus can reach us any place, anywhere, any time, any second. The 27th book of Psalms, I just don't have my glasses because y'all know after a certain age, things change. <laughs> Give me two seconds here and I'm going to pull it right up. Yes. I don't want to belabor the moment, but give me a couple of moments to pull up the text. Okay, now I got a, I got a little help here. Just a little bit. Pastor put me on the spot this morning, but uh, there is a word from the Lord on today. And I'm trying to pull it up if I can. Just give me two seconds. I always carry a word in my pocket. And they, said, they told me to take my time. I, I, want, I want to get out your way as quickly as I can. But I know there is a word that the Lord has on my heart on today. You know, one of the things that I can say as I'm, as I'm going through this morning's uh, uh, message for today, um, oftentimes when folks are, are spoken about when it comes to um, his, history, oftentimes they have gone on to be with the Lord. And I'm grateful that the Lord allowed me, Pamela A. Smith, to be recognized uh, while I'm still alive. We want to give uh, recognition certainly to our young people on today who, who spoke so eloquently uh, about some of our African American leaders. Uh, uh, and, and, and one of the things I have to say about these young people, these young people are very talented. They're very gifted. It's coming, y'all. Give me two seconds. Because he put me on the spot this morning. <laughs> It's coming. And I want to, oh, oh Lord. Let me see, is this it? Uh-oh. We ready. <laughs> just, just a little bit. I, I, I only want to lift up a very few verses of Psalms 27. Uh-oh, excuse me. 
I might have to come out this, this, this jacket here, 27, Psalms 27, uh, the 13th and the 14th verse. <sighs> here we go. Now you know the Lord always keeps us prepared. Psalm 27, the 13th and the 14th verses for your hearing on this morning. Actually, I'm going to start at the 11th verse. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord <laughs> and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. And Paul was like a good old Baptist preacher. He said it again. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let us pray. Eternally and all wise God, it's once again I come as humble as I know how just to say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for this moment, this second, this hour, O oh God, oh God, a God, a moment in time in which you have blessed us with. I ask, O oh God, that you would open up the minds, the ears of the listeners on today, O oh God, that you would move in this place as only you can. Consecrate my lips on this morning, O oh God. Hide me behind the cross and allow your people to see you as you reign in this place. Purify me, sanctify me. Help me to be all that you've called me to be. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thy sight, O God, because you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. You may be seen. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, as I thought about what I would oftentimes carry in my back pocket, Whenever I get a chance to preach, I, I think about the time when I've had the opportunity to go out and, and eat at a restaurant with my friends. While at the restaurant, we would place our orders. And oftentimes, we would get together and we would talk about the things that we've done uh, in the time period that we've spent uh, away from each other because most of my friends live in New York City and I live here in Washington, D.C. at the request of Mayor Muriel Bowser. <laughs> and while we are eating, we oftentimes determine the type of food that we're going to eat. And oftentimes, you know, I'm, I'm not from any fancy place. I'm just from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. A good piece of chicken and some collard greens and fried chicken will do me just fine. But on this particular day, the, the waitress came and, and took our order. And I ordered what I thought was something that was very simple. She took our orders and she walked away and we began to engage in our usual conversation pieces as we talked about what was going on in each other's lives. One of the things that my friends know about me is that I do love to eat. Although I'm not a food connoisseur, nor, nor am I the best cook across the land, as a matter of fact, I am very particular about the things that I eat and the things that go into my body. But on this day, while we sat at the restaurant talking about their food, and, 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 and seemingly their food came out before mine, that there appeared, Pastor Lyles, to be a delay in, in bringing my food. So I asked the waitress, what was taking so long? And she said, ma'am, your order is considered a special order. And special orders take time. I thought about what the waitress said when I read the text here in the book of Psalms because there are some things that we have asked the Lord for on this morning. It has not yet materialized. There are some things that we've been talking to God about on, on this morning. It has not yet materialized. But maybe your request from the Lord huh, is a special is a special order. And sometimes, come on here, Pam, sometimes special order takes time. Pre preach, Reverend Pam. I've seen others' prayers answered. I've seen others' experience breakthrough. I've seen others' experience victory. I've asked God to do some things in my life, and yet he has not done it. Maybe my order. I feel real good. <laughs> 
feel good right now. Maybe my order is, huh? A special order. Can we tell the folks out in cyber world on this morning? And can you turn to the person sitting next to you to let you know that maybe the request that you have from God is not just some run of the mill kind of request. The request that you are asking God for is not a request that he can just give you overnight. But maybe the request that you are asking for is going to take a little more time because your, re your request huh, is a... It's a special order. Listen, listen, it's not something that you can get off the rack. It's not something that you can get off the showroom floor. It's really not something that you can pick up in Louis Vuitton or even Gucci. But your order, it's a special order. And this morning, I just stopped by to let you know that what you've asked the Lord for, what you have walked the floors for, what you have requested from the Lord is a special order. And special orders take time. The waitress, uh, the waitress in the restaurant in, in Staten Island, New York, told me that it's a special order, Reverend Pam, and your special order takes a little, a little time. So I come this morning asking you to stop giving God a drop dead date and recognize that he is getting it ready for you and getting you ready for it. God is not operating by your Timex. God is not operating by your Rolex. God is not operating by your your, your Louis Vuitton watch, but God is an on time God. And the songwriter said, yes he is. He's an on time God and sometimes, sometimes it, it feels like God is not going to answer our questions. It feels like God has, has abdicated the throne but I stop by to let somebody know that it's not about what time you think God is going to answer. It's on his time and his time alone. As we, as we sat through uh, a pandemic somebody still needed a blessing uh, as we sat in our homes unable to to get out into the spaces and places that we wanted to be somebody was still looking uh, for a blessing uh, somebody was still looking for a spouse uh, somebody was still looking for your bills to get paid somebody was still looking for your mortgage to be paid but but god said that the request that you are asking of me is a special order he and special order takes time. And I stopped by to let somebody know on this morning that what you're praying for, that God is going to do it. He, he's going, mm, he's going to do it. That, that healing that you're looking for, he's going to do it. That breakthrough that you're looking for, he is going to do it. That special friend that you've been asking about for a long time ago, he's going to do it because your order is a special order. And special orders take just uh, a little more time. And even, and even the farmers have to wait. They have to wait for the harvest to come through because they do not determine what happens underground. They've got to wait for God to work it out underground. And I want somebody to know on this morning that God is working underground in your life. God is working behind the scenes. It, it may not look like that he's doing anything. It may look like that he's going on strike. It may look like that he's advocated the throne. But can I suggest to you on today that you serve an old time God? Yes, this morning, this morning, your, your prayer request might not have become a praise report, but God is. He, he's up to something. The same God that declared that he was going to have a pistol-packing preacher serve as the chief of police for the Metropolitan Police Department, the first African-American chief in 163 years. Listen here, somebody asked for something, and I declare and decree that this order was a special order. And in 2023, God said, this special order took a little more time but in the meantime when we are, are are asking God for an answer what am I to do Reverend Pam well well I can ask you not to be impatient 
and patient is one of the most miserable mandates in the world in which we live. We want it now. We want it yesterday. We want it five minutes ago, but we want it right now, not tomorrow. We got to have it right now. Listen, I know it's hard for you to hear, for me to tell you, but, but I've come this morning shooting a hole in your halo by telling you to just wait anyhow. When what you need is not a regular blessing, wait, 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 wait anyhow. When what you need is not a regular run mill of a mill of run of the mill breakthrough, you've got to wait anyhow. When what you need is not just ordinary, huh? you've got to wait. Sometimes the waitress says you've got to wait just a little longer. Because your order, I feel real good, is a is a special order. But like many, I I know how difficult it is to wait on the Lord. Reverend Pam, you said to me on this morning that I've got to wait. I have waited and I've waited and I've waited long enough and things just ain't getting no better. Just remember that waiting does not mean inactivity. Wait on that job but still fill out the application. Wait for the healing, baby, but please take your medicine. I don't hear nobody on this morning. Wait for the bills to be paid, but at least enact the plan to get it done very quickly. All God wants from you and me on this morning is an unwavering faith in the midst of trials, tribulations, and tragedies, and turmoils. And if I can wait on the Lord, huh? if I can just wait on the Lord, God will. Huh? He will see us through. Come on, somebody. I've got a special one. I've got a special order. And that's why my order takes just uh, a, little, a little more time. It's difficult to just sit around and wait. I remember going through the, the promotion or the, the experience for this position as chief of police. That thing took a long time. I had to wait. <laughs> it took a real long time. I probably went through six interviews and I almost let go. I almost gave up in the process because it was so long. But I realized that I had to wait on, I couldn't tell y'all to wait on the Lord if I wasn't standing in the spaces and places where I needed to wait on the Lord. But it was difficult. I remember even during the pandemic how difficult it was and how we, we didn't even want to wait at the traffic lights <laughs> or, or at the train track for the trains to, to go through and, and how we didn't even, for ladies in the house, just, I just want to talk to the ladies just for a few moments, even to sit in the hair salon and get our hair done. <laughs> and I often joke about this, but I don't have much hair. <laughs> and it shouldn't take them four hours. <laughs> four hours to do my hair. Listen, I can do it myself, but it shouldn't take them. I'm sorry, beauticians. If there are any beauticians in the house, I declare and decree that we shouldn't have to wait that long to get our hair done. In the hair salon, I'm just messing with you, but, but, but even in the hair salon or even in the barber shop, we, we don't want to wait. We want to hurry up and wait, and we want folks to, to hurry up and, and, and push us through, even on this morning. I know there are some folks out there saying, I wish she would just hurry up <laughs> and get to the end of this sermon so I can go back and do some, uh, some, something else. But I, but I tell somebody that I wish she would just hurry up and get through. But I stopped by to let somebody know that God is a W-A-I-T watcher. Let me say that again. God is a weight watcher. And he is just watching to see if you will wait with confidence and faith to see him come through, to see him work it out, to see him bring you through your circumstance and your situation. He's just W-A-I-T-I-N-G waiting on you to do what you need to do to wait on the Lord huh? and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yeah. Sometimes you've, you've got to wait, you've got to give him time, no matter how long it takes. 
He's a God that you cannot hurry, but he will be there, don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always, he's always on time. Is there anybody in this place who knows that the God that we serve is an on time God? He's never late, but he ain't early either. He's right on time, and I wish I could get some folks in here to help me preach this thing on, on this morning. And you can just simply shout, I'm going to wait on the Lord. Uh, tell, tell your neighbor that you're next in line for a miracle, but sometimes we've got to wait. We've been in situations where we've had to hurry to wait. I want to encourage you on this morning that you've got to wait on the Lord. And as you wait on the Lord, God will, huh? God will bring you through. Now David says, because I got to get to the text just for a few moments. David says in Psalm 27 and 14 to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, I just told you that's like an old Baptist preacher that'll say it two times. Wait on, on the Lord. Twice in one verse, David says this. Now, this psalm is a part of the first book of Psalter. Those of us who are familiar with the Psalter, we recognize that there are 150 psalms that make up the Psalter. The book one is Psalms number one through 41. Book two is 42 through 72. 73 through 89, that's book three. 90 through 106, that's book four. 107 through 150, that's book five. That is, this is the part of book one, and the writer says that this is a psalm, teach Reverend Pam, of David. We're not told when he penned it. We're not told when he picked up his pen and wrote this prolific, powerful, purposeful psalm, but that he picked it up for pre-preaching from Fort foot Baptist church on today. He doesn't tell us anything about that, but, but yet he tells you and I who are here on this morning some thousands of years later that we got to, that we got to wait on the Lord. And I don't care what you're going through. I've discovered that, that when I wait on God, I won't make a mistake. I can't hear nobody on this morning. Listen, I don't let nobody rush you ahead of God. No, don't let nobody. Listen, you know how many folks have told me over and over again that you ought to be a pastor of a church. The Lord told me. Let me help somebody this morning. Just for a little bit. Listen, I have a relationship with God. And God ain't got to tell you nothing to tell me that he hadn't already told me. You just come by confirmation in order to encourage me to hear his voice. The things that he's already told me. Don't try to push me into something that I'm not ready for. Don't try to push your brothers and sisters into something that they're not ready for. If you have a relation... If you have a relationship with God, God... See, Austin Miles says he walks with me, huh? And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. In the garden, wherever your garden is, don't let nobody push you to a point that you're getting ahead of God. I told those folks, I ain't trying to be a pastor or nothing. And nobody... He knew he called who he called, <laughs> not Reverend Pam. That's not the conversations that we have. And sometimes you've just got to be honest with people and let them know that's not the relationship that God and I have and that's not what he wants me to do. In 2023, he called me to pass the police officers. Over 4,000 people. Listen, I, I don't have to do this. I can just help bring up the rear. I've discovered that when I, when I wait on the Lord, I, I won't make a mistake. This is a Psalm of David and there's no other description other than a Psalm of David. You know I gotta go get my hair done in a couple of days now cause y'all gonna make me sweat this thing out. This is, there is no ascription 
that gives us the historical background of the stump. Stop taking pictures because these ain't good pictures for y'all right now. My brothers and sisters, listen, when you read Psalm 34, it gives you a historical background where you can trace that psalm back to a particular time in David's life. It says, it says, a psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech who drove him away and departed. Now this psalm doesn't say it. It just simply says a psalm of David. The 34th chapter of Psalms can be connected to the first Samuel chapter 21 verse 13. But this psalm just says, hmm, it's a psalm of David. This 27th psalm has no historical background. Again, a man after God's own heart just wrote, uh, wait on the Lord. That this sweet psalm of Israel just said, wait on the Lord. The one that maintains high spirits at low times says, wait on the Lord. The musical monarch says, wait on the Lord. And isn't this just like David? Because he wrote over half of the Psalms. But there are different times in David's life, just like yours and mine's, where he was at a high, and other times he was at an all-time low. In low moments, high moments, I'm sorry, high moments in his life, David would write stuff like, the Lord is uh, my shepherd and I, I shall not want. Read Psalm 23. At high times he wrote stuff like Psalms 34 verses 1 through 3. Three, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Come on, y'all. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Is there anybody in here who have had some high times in your life? Is there anybody in this place who have had some low times in your life? And even during those moments, You've been directed to just wait on the Lord and be of good courage. But it's at low times. Tell your neighbor that you know what I've I've had some 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 low times, some high times, brother David. I've I've had some high times, Brother David, but I've, but I've also had um, some low times in my life. And it's at low times David would write stuff like Psalms 22 and 1, where he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You remember those were the same words that Jesus cried out on a dying cross of Calvary. David was a master pensman as he talked about the goodness, the grace, the generosity and the graciousness of God. I don't know what's happening in David's life at the time of the text, but as I peruse it, I discovered that there are some things going on in David's life. First of all, according to verse 2 and 3, he's being pursued by his enemies. Holler back at me if you know what I mean. In verse 4, he's shut off from the house of God. In verse 10, he's parted or is departing from his parents, his mother and his father. In verse 12, he's become the subject of slander. Mama, how many of you have been the subject? <laughs> Y'all know the Washington Post, they real good. I ain't talking about nobody up in here this morning. I'm just saying what I'm saying. The subject of slammed. But I serve a God who dispatches his, mm, his angels around me. And every time I, I wake up in the morning, I'm reminded of touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So just as you begin to think about saying anything against me, you've got to go through some le- you got to go through some layers to get to me. And I know that if you got to me, God has allowed it to happen. And surely if he brought me to it, he's going to, he's going to bring me through it. How many of you know that we serve an on-time God? A God that sits high and a God that, that looks low. But David's plate is full. And somebody has come in here on this morning and your, your plate is full. And every now and then in life your plate will become full and the question arises, what do you do when your plate becomes full? You just wait on the Lord. T- tell your neighbor to keep waiting on him, just, just wait on him. And David right now, 
is in the midst of everything that is going on, he remains confident of God's love. He understands that in spite of it all, God is still on his side. It is a psalm that David says to you and me, we are to wait on God based on God's track record. Let, let me say that again. You, you, ought to wait on, you ought to wait on God based on God's track record. Because you do remember in 2020, we didn't think we were going to make it, but that was in the past. You do remember a time when your child was acting up and you couldn't get him to get right with, without any help. But that was in, huh, in the past. You do recall that when you could not pay your bills back in 1999, it was somebody that knocked on your door and helped you out along the way. That was in the past. You ought to believe and trust in God based on his past performance. Based on his past performance portfolio. Because God has done a lot of things for you and I in the past. And had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be today in the past? He's done some good things for you and I huh? in the past. I didn't think I was going to make it when my father died huh? in the past. I didn't think I was going to make it on last year when my mama died. But look at me now. It... Woo! I thought I was going to lose my mind huh? in the past. Huh? thought I was going to get fired at one point in my career in the past but I serve a God who has a past performance portfolio and anything that I ask of the Lord it shall come to pass but sometimes I've got to wait I've got to wait I've got to wait there because I know he's done some things for me in the past and I know he's going to do it for me right now. And it is often time a fact that God often uses chaos. He uses challenges, conflict, confrontation to make us do what my grandmama used to say to me a long time ago. When I would get out of hand just a little bit, Deacon. Go sit yourself down somewhere, girl. <laughs> How many grandmamas we have in this space? Go, go, hey, you, you, you know every now and then we've, we've got to sit down somewhere and, and let God be God. Let God handle the details of your life. God is in the detail business. He gets intricately involved in the minor details of your life. And I praise his holy name because I may miss it in the midst of it all. Keep your confidence in God. Trouble, trouble huh, is all around David. Enemies desire to destroy him, but his confidence in God is at an all-time high. His confidence is not shaken. His faith is sure. His trust in God is strong. He opened this psalm affirming that the Lord has been of a great help to him. And it is David who says, the Lord is my light. He's my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I ain't ever scared. Y'all know some rapper said that back in the day. He said, I ain't ever scared. So, excuse me, educators, I know you don't like for me to use that vernacular. But I also have a degree in education. And every now and then, I've got to come down to where our young people are. And every now and then, I've got to speak the same language that they speak. Every now and then, I've got to understand what they're saying because we've moved into a time and place in life where y'all afraid of y'all kids. And that's a problem. The Lord is my light, and he's my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Now, y'all come to church every Sunday morning. Y'all can't do nothing with y'all kids. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, I don't have any kids, so I can say it. I raised a niece and a nephew, right? You shouldn't be afraid of your children. I, I'm, I'm happy to say today that the, the number of juveniles that we arrested last year, we, are, we have trended down significantly in the District of Columbia this year. And I say it oftentimes, and listen, I'm not trying to arrest all the young people. That's not my intent. I'm the chief of police. I got to do what I got to do. But I'd like to see some prevention. <laughs> 
on the other side before they get to enforcement, right? Am I talking to somebody on this morning? If, if, if we could just work with our children before they get here. Because that's really what I want to see. I really want to see our young people to thrive and to grow and be successful in this world. Because uh, quiet as it's kept, and some of you may or may not know this, but they are our future. Yeah. They're the ones who are supposed to be responsible for taking care of us. Yeah. And David says, the Lord is my light. Yeah. Yeah. And we're running around here scared of 7 and 12 years old. I had to say it. Yes, I did. Because it bothers my spirit. Every time I receive a text message, early in the morning, late at night, two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock, why is a nine-year-old outside at 12 o'clock at night? Why, why is a 12-year-old outside at one o'clock in the morning? Prevention. We, we need to work on that side, with that family, with that household to give those people the services that they need so that their kids won't be out wandering the streets. Listen, I'm in it to win it. I really am. I'm in this thing to win it. But I'm crazy enough to believe that God just don't call anybody. He doesn't. He, he doesn't just call anybody to do the job that he, that he is requiring and asking of. Whatever the assignment is, he doesn't just call anybody. He chooses us. <laughs> and so I've been chosen for such a time as this. I, I, listen, I, I didn't know why. I still don't know why. But everything that I do, every decision that I make for the Metropolitan Police Department is brought before the Lord every single morning, every single night, every single day. I don't do nothing, nothing without laboring over what God would have me to do in the District of Columbia. Somebody said, well, we don't need a preacher to be a chief. We need a police chief to be the chief. Well, I stopped by to let somebody know <laughs> that the God I serve declared and decreed 55 years ago, oops, I'm telling my age, 55 years ago that Pamela Smith was going to serve as the chief of police for the Metropolitan Police Department and he declared and decreed that he was going to have a preacher and a police officer coexisting in the same space. Why? Because he knows what we need in the District of Columbia. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait, I said it. Wait on the Lord. David says, the Lord is my light and he is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? This is, um, this is the most impressive statements in the Old Testament affirming the security of God. And it's just simply this, the Lord is. <laughs> it's not that he's going to be. It's not that he used to be. He just simply is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is. How many of you know that he is? Yeah. And oftentimes when I, when, I, when I delivered this message before, I, 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 would, I would ask folks about a word that isn't a word, educators. <laughs> I have to go here because sometimes we just make up stuff along the way. And so I just made up a word. Y'all just go with me. You ought to know every now and then that when God is doing what he's doing in your life, you ought to think about the isness of God. I, I told you, ma'am, it wasn't a word. I just felt like making it up. Because whatever you need, God is. Whatever you need him to be in your life on today, God is. If you need a way out of no way, huh? He is. If you need a mind regulator, he is. If you need a breakthrough, huh? he is. If you need a doctor in the sick room, huh? he is. If you need a lawyer in the court.
throne room, he is. If you need somebody to fight your battles, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that you and I could ever ask or think. He just simply, he is. Yes, he is. And oftentimes I've, in my own space, I've had to think about how good God is. And I remember a song when I was a little child growing up in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. My daddy was the preacher and he was also the director of the choir and he was the pastor of the church. And, and my uncles are all pastors and my grandfather are pastors. So somehow or another, I just happened to be sitting underneath the, the raindrops and a few raindrops just fell on me. I don't know where this thing came from, but I'm here right now. And every now and then as, a, as I traverse around my house, I come on, come on, get the keyboard ready. I'm just gonna sing a little bit of this. I'm not a singer by no means necessary. But um, every now and then I just think about how good God is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain. I said I was singing. <laughs> Promise to keep me, never to leave me, never ever falling short on his word. I've got too fast. I'll keep my life. I want you go with him when he comes back.
God from Zion. I gotta put my towel on the microphone because it's still hot. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. If I've never been obedient once in my life, I was today. This is not Joseph Lyle's moment. God said, you need to get out of the way. There's a word from the Lord, from this woman of God. Can we give God praise for this Chief Reverend Pamela Smith? My God from heaven. Woo! Did not our hearts burn? As the woman of God spoke to us along the way. This was unplanned, unrehearsed, but God showed up in a mighty way. Can you imagine how she would have preached if she knew she was scheduled to preach? Jesus is an on time God. I wasn't sure. But now I am. My spirit says she, she wasn't finished. Sure enough. Lord have mercy. The District of Columbia is about to change. Matter of fact, it's being changed. This anointing from God will transform a city. It will no longer be deemed a city under siege. It will be a city under salvation and sanctification. Reverend Chief Pamela Smith, thank God for you anointing today. We praise God for your obedience. Woo. The psalmist said, this is the Lord's doing. We are marvel and it's mighty nice in the sight of the Lord. This is the work of the Lord. Mm. Four Foot Baptist Church will never be the same after this day. When God says, get out the way, we need to get out the way. See, here's what I've come to learn, family. If there's a light within, I don't always need the limelight. Sometimes. Get out of God's way. Let God be. Let God's will be done. Mercy. What a word, what a word. Wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Shall run and not be weary. Shall walk and not faint. Wait. Mm. those who are not here today in person we're going to try to explain to you what happened best we can but something happens when you worship in person if you can even the video doesn't do this service justice you just have to be in his presence oh that's fullness of joy at his right hand, I pledge you evermore. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Heaven came down and filled our souls. You can't plan that. You can't even teach that. That's just the anointing of God. If you're here today and don't know Jesus, you just ought to by now. You ought to just run on down there. I got Jesus, I yield. I, I want you to be my savior. Come on, if you don't know him. If you never accepted Christ, today is a mighty fine day, an awesome day to do just that. After all this preaching and teaching, it, it would make no sense for you to leave lost today. You waited long enough. Come on. If we're here today and we are saved, after the benediction, we ought to run and tell somebody, today is the day of salvation. 
Stop waiting. Stop procrastinating. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. Any day you hear God's voice, don't harden your heart. Thank you, Lord, for your gift. Definitely a voice of change. There's no way in the world this economy can remain the same under this kind of anointing. God has sent it for such a time as this. It was hard to keep our seats. Maybe you're here today and you already know this wonderful Savior. We encourage you to become a member of our loving, caring, growing family. You may come at this time. We're glad to welcome you to your new family. You may come if God is so leading and speaking to your heart at this present time. Would there be some today? God is moving in this house a prayer. It's been an awesome two months already. Only God knows what the rest of 2024 holds. If this keeps going on, it's going to be something up in here. If we yield to God, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll do the drawing. The old preacher said, I don't care who's pumping the pump. I just need some fresh water. Help me, Holy Spirit. Be seated for one moment if you can. We got to invite two more couple of members to our new family. Come on down, my dear. Come on down. Come on down and join me. Amber Harper has accepted the Lord as her Savior. She desires membership. She is coming by Christian faith. She des desires membership as a fourth foot. So, church, I make a motion that Amber be a member of Fort Foot Baptist Church with all rights and privileges of Fort Foot as a member. Been properly moved in second. Sister Amber Harper become a member of Four Foot Baptist Church. You've heard that motion. Are you prepared to vote? All in favor, let it be shown by the usual sign of voting. Miss Amber, all those hands are saying, Welcome home. We're so glad you're here. We just got better because you were here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, your deacon is yours truly, Deacon Truesdale, and your deaconess is uh, one of them. One of them. Uh, Anthenia Morgan. Anthenia Morgan is your deaconess, okay? All right. So now, uh, I am just so excited. Chief, oh my God, my Lord. Oh my goodness. Hey, 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 hey. Let me get some of that. Hey, Amen. So all the ministers, deacons, deaconess, trustees, altar counselors, come on down and welcome Amber to the Ford. Amen. Welcome home, Ms. Amber Harper. Amen. Thank you for serving in the military. So young, so young. Come on. Everybody say. Amen. Everybody say. Amen. Everybody say. Amen. 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 All the choir said. And the choir said. And the choir said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Sing it over. If you love Jesus, if you're born again, say, Amen, Amen, Everybody say. Church said, Amen. 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 
everybody say Today, no doubt about it, we had church up in here today. The Holy Ghost is moving in this place and we know it. It is the presence of the Lord in his presence as fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures. You never know what's going to happen in God's house when you just show up and wait for the blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This Saturday at 12 noon, we have another cause of celebration, the installation of Pastor Reverend Larry E. Hintz, now the newly elected pastor of Freedom Way Baptist Church in the nation's capital. You are invited to come and have your same seat. They'd be honored and glad for your prayer and your presence. Another son of the fort is called to pastor to lead God's people. You are welcome to come and share this Saturday at 12 noon. Please come if you can. It'll be another great day of celebration. My soul is just happy. I want to run, skip, dance, and jump. All at the same time. Good God. From, when you trust in the Lord. This time last year, we could hardly even come together at all. But look at what the Lord has done. Thank you, Anointed Gospel Choir, for your music ministry. Thank you, Hard Work and Media Ministry, for all your graphics. Thank you, Fourth Foot, for being the loving body of Christ that you are. Something happened on yesterday morning, I believe, at the fort. What had happened? We had a food distribution on yesterday, and we were able to provide food for over 300 families. Amen. Amen. We are not a warehouse for storing goods. We're a spiritual distribution center. When the blessings come in, they should flow out to be a blessing to the people of God. And for, so you know, when you go downstairs at room 15, there's some fragments of what was left from yesterday. There's some potatoes in those bags. Those are actually potatoes and also some grapefruit. By room 15, right by the elevator, right downstairs. What a mighty God. Yes. Yes. Miss Reverend Chief, can you come forward? We just got to pray. Can we stand as a congregation? We got to pray to God to keep us safe in this anointing. Yeah. Touch the neighbor as we pray. Eternal God, we come on behalf of the Chief of Police, Reverend Pamela A. Smith, that, that you continue to put your heads of protection all around her so that no hurt, harm, or danger will come to her. We know the devil is mad, but it's too late. Your anointing is heavily upon her. May her blessings continue to be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. May all that she put her hand to be blessed and highly favored. We claim it done in the awesome, mighty, powerful name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's family said amen. amen. We'll be praying for you every single day. We have your back. Thank you for pouring out, blessing us in a mighty, awesome way. God be praised. May he bless you double for all of your trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus.